Hi, everyone. Um, if you are viewing this video, you are here with Dr. Marion Wilson, Superintendent of District 31 and the New York City DOE. And we are here today to talk about um, the wonderful work that Marion has been doing in District 31 regarding principal inquiry. And just to give you a little background, the principals have all been engaged in using a very similar blueprint that you're going to see in the book. Of course, we personalize it a lot in um, Dr. Wilson's district, but I wanted to start this um, conversation and just number one saying I'm super grateful that you're here um, and speaking with me about this today. And the first question is, um, why? Why did you think principal inquiry in one of the largest districts in the country um, was worth it? Wow, that's a great question. And thank you so much for your partnership. Um, I think coming on board with 74 unique school leaders, I needed to do something different. In my capacity as a deputy superintendent in the district prior to becoming superintendent, I knew that inquiry was going to be the way to help leverage the expertise across the district. And when I mentioned to you, and I called you just before I got the job, I said, Paul, I'm going to need your help in thinking through a way of achieving my goal of collective leadership efficacy. And I know there wasn't a lot of research in the field about that. And when you said to me, well, Mary, what you're talking about really sounds like inquiry groups. I'm like, interesting. I always did it with teachers, but thinking about it with school leaders, I think that was kind of like the impetus. And then it kind of blossomed from that initial conversation with you. Um, and I think it's, it was a great leverage point from year one to now where we are going into year three of principal inquiry groups. And a lot of people say they're doing principal inquiry groups, but it's more really a PLC. It's um, a critical friends group, but not inquiry the way that our principals are attempting to look at data in a different place and really use that data to leverage their problems of practice and their theories of actions. Yeah, so just for everyone that's listening or watching, what Marion did is really have people think about those things that keep them up at night. What are those puzzles of practice that they're trying to figure out? And because it's such a large district, it made sense for principals to work with one another because many of them had similar puzzles of practice. In your first year out, I know it was more volunteer. And then you made some shifts over that second year. Can you just speak briefly about like what good happened from that first year and allowing people to kind of choose their inquiry group and then giving them some more guide rails in year two and how that made the inquiry work a little bit better. Definitely. So beginning a superintendency coming right off the heels of the pandemic, we knew that we wanted to get people excited about being learners themselves. So leaders are learners. So the first year they had the choice. Oh, I think I want to learn more about um, teacher feedback. I want to learn more about social emotional learning. It was a great leverage point for me as a brand new superintendent, not knowing what I knew and what I didn't know, um, to just get them engaged in the work and just thinking differently about how they approached their own professional learning and the needs of their learning. Moving into year two, you and I then strategize um, with the help of my deputy superintendent, Ms. Chavez, aligning it with their feedback from their end of year summative leadership practice, um, the rubric that they get. So in New York City, all principals end up with the end of year feedback summary sheet. This just has summative um, feedback on how they've done. We then decided to really be strategic. What's that high leverage piece of feedback, whether it's around instructional programs, around building community, around culturally responsiveness, restorative practices, um, even compassionate systems. We really got deliberate now because as a district, you also helped me think about, and this is something that I told you I wanted to do, how do we engage in district inquiry? And the way to engage is that if I have a qualitative measure that is assigned a quantitative measure, using inquiry groups that's tied with principal performance data, I have my own way of tracking to see if my approach was effective. Yeah. So what I'm hearing from you, inquiry wasn't just about the principals engaged in doing inquiry around a puzzle of practice, it was also a way for you to get feedback and to become better in your role as lead learner. Exactly. Right? Now, in, in the second year, then, 
you kind of tighten the guide rails a little bit with the principal performance. Can you tell me about like the impact of that? Let's first, let's say, talk about the success story because I was there at the end of the year when we celebrated. And I think unanimously, everyone wanted to another year with their inquiry group. So I think there was a lot of success. What do you think led to that overwhelming success? So each month as a superintendent, I'm allowed to have a principal meeting, one meeting per month per the contract allowing them the opportunity for five times during that year to meet with their inquiry groups, powerful. So thinking about the buy-in as leaders, everyone was excited for that day that came. Monthly, they get to meet with their group. So they formed a bond. Our district encompasses the entire island of Staten Island. We're divided by an expressway. Principals that never normally would go to one side of the island started going to another side. I had high school principals telling me I was in a pre-K classroom Oh my God, I felt so uncomfortable, but it was the best day of my life. But coming back to the culminating activity in May, and again, the work continues, it never stops. Seeing how people are talking differently about the data that they're collecting, how we did a lot of work of really ironing out the theory of action for both the district. And my success story, part of it too, is that I achieved some of the pieces with our district theory of action that we crafted because of inquiry groups. So we wasn't yeah. just a feel good, looking at the data around measures with geometry and vocabulary, but even the systems and structures, we normalized our vocabulary and everyone's theory of action became more grounded in problems of practice around, well, we're not blaming kids. What is happening with student learning that we're not getting the results? Or how can we enhance teachers um, so they work at optimal um, performance? And really naming it so it to become a blame game, but talking about creative ways of solving our problems as a district has unified us. We're more cohesive. Of course, we're a work in progress. It's not perfected yet. But I think the inquiry group process has really changed the leverage the game for us as instructional leaders in Staten Island. I really appreciate this conversation. I want to leave with what's what's one or two big mistakes that you think are the best mistakes that we could all learn from. So I think not grounding every inquiry group in a core text. So you and I would talk and have the conversations and you always like, you're my person. You're like my walking library. So when I need something and I'm like, Paul, I'm thinking about this, whether it's the work around teacher clarity or introducing us to Michael McDowell or to Matasol, you always have that text that helps to ground and center the work that theoretically, I love that. And I think not doing that from the gate is yeah. a mistake that we made, but it's not detrimental because they did get, they got articles and journal articles and research that they could use, but the core text really made a difference. That's a mistake that I know we made. The second piece is when there was confusion and, and they didn't have clarity around using the blueprint, I should have brought you in sooner. I think the noise came from the field that they were uncomfortable with it because they really didn't understand what it meant to triangulate data. But when yeah. you gave us, they're still using the language of leading indicators, lagging indicators, that should have came sooner. But again, through the reflective process, I brought you in at the right time, but we probably should have done that much sooner to gain the yeah. clarity. Yeah, I think for everyone that's watching and listening, I think our error collectively is there was some assumptions around data use that we assumed that we shouldn't have. And I think it reared its ugly head and it created some confusion. And I think as soon as we got back in and cleared some stuff up regarding data triangulation and how to use evidence to support your inquiry, I think there's more clarity. What's the goal for this year? This year now, so we're going to drill down even deeper. They had tiered professional learning. We're even tearing it now more because I have very, very highly successful schools in the district. We want to make sure that they stay highly successful and not just around student outcomes, but also teacher performance. But I think we need to really drill down now and I'm going to tier within the tier, um, looking at the supports at um, adult learners. So we have to think about how principals learn differently than how we talk about teachers and students. So really capitalizing on what you've talked about with the social networks, still not leaving the whole collective efficacy um, lens. That's still something very important for me. Right. But I think this year, really just drilling down on those schools and those leaders that really need more TLC from us 
their inquiry group structure is going to look a little different, but we're so excited to, to think about year three now, learning from the mistakes and just keep the continuous cycle of improvement while also thinking about improvement science as well. Well, thank you so much. And I hope that everyone that's watching is learning a lot. Thank you.